How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Dictionary. We have some familiar faces in the Great Heights band, and they can see their names and what they do. Neil, you go for it. Yeah, I'm awkward. <laughs> <laughs> awkward. Uh, uh, my name's Neil uh, Karkanis. I uh, play guitar, and I sing in the uh, the Great Heights band. Yeah, and I'm Paul Martinez. I play drums in the Great Heights band. Awesome. Well, uh, Neil, well, we were uh, talking beforehand. We were talking about uh, the, he started a record label. Congrats on that. Obviously, I already said that already, but it sounds, you know, I got to do it for the vid. Um, but yeah. uh, how, I guess, how's that been? How's the band been? I We were talking about how long it's been since the last time we chatted, which was about two years ago. So, you know, how has the band been? How's, um, how has your lives been? been uh it's been a long time <laughs> yeah um it's been good so thank you first of all um i'm i'm wondering if you're gonna have stuff in the green screen behind you that i'm should not be, like it's i okay. could if you want but not now yeah i think we should put some maybe you're like flying through space or something that might be cool okay. um, but yeah i mean the, the label um we, we we launched in back in 2018 but we didn't start putting out any records until 2019 um, and I kind of like run it, but um, the band is a big part of it. Um, sure. Everyone, everyone jumps in and, and helps out when they can. Um, you know, all the Great Heights band stuff is now coming out through uh, Rad Pop Records. Um, but really, it's more of it's not so much a label; it's more like a collective. Uh, right. um, it's a collective space where all our friends can release their music if they want to. You know, and you know, between Paul, Eric, Owen, and I, we probably combined have like. 80 years worth of like music industry experience at this point um, and that's like really good knowledge and if we can help other people out and help our friends out that's a good thing so it's been a blast I feel like that's I, as we were kind of divulging into a little bit earlier on but that's how I felt like the channel is kind of going in the direction of is like um my I guess like five or ten year goal is to have a label and kind of do probably very similar what you guys are doing is more of a collective where you know the resources that I get from doing the channel can be utilized by you know a bunch of other people and I'm already starting to work on that now so um you know there there's a band I'm working with now uh called Second to Safety they're based out of Pittsburgh that I'm working with now on their release uh, coming up soon so I feel like uh, I've always felt like you guys have had a business minded band and it's just something that I've always appreciated as like kind of a bystander I guess of being a fan of your band and stuff like that um, but I guess how what was the thought process behind that more so because I feel like that was that's an interesting concept that I don't know if you guys were planning on doing it prior to the last time we talked which is like two years ago well it's I think that it you know, not just speaking for Neil, because Neil's the one who really started sure. uh, Rad Pop, but just even before, um, you know, when I was uh, back in, when I was in Yumi and everyone we know, we realized that labels didn't really do everything for us that we wanted to, and a lot of what they were doing we could have done ourselves. Sure. Uh, and I think being in the music business as long as I have been, I've seen people you know, come and go and put money into things that they don't really need to and, and they don't learn it all for themselves, so they don't know what to expect from a label. And, you know, not always, but sometimes record labels take advantage of bands that don't really know that, hey, like, we can do all this stuff for yourself. Sure. Uh, I, I've found that uh, as times have changed, the record label wants the band to do 90% of their own promotion. And, uh, you know show promoters want the band to do 90% of the promotion. It's like, promoter, you are supposed to promote. It's in your name. Yeah. You're the promoter, but you're worried about how many people we're going to draw, how many people are you going to draw? Because when I started doing this, the promoter was like, hey, I want you to play this show, and I guarantee you that I will have 200 people out there to see your band. And then now a lot of promoters are like, so how many people are you going to bring? How many pre are you going to sell? Like here's a stack of twenty five tickets. If you don't sell them, then you're not you don't get to play, and that sucks. Yeah, and sure. So, you know, it was just this idea of like, you know, we can do this ourselves on the next release. And Neil was like, hey, instead of doing this ourselves, why don't I start a label? And we do it, and then we help other bands that don't really know. But he's now become this guiding light 
towards other bands and people in the music industry are like, how did you do this? And he's like, yo, I just like learned how to do it. And with anything in life, if you just try it and you fail, you're going to get better at it. Because, sure, yeah. you know, they, if you've ever like listened to any motivational speaker, they say the most successful people in this world are people who know how to fail really well. And you just fall on your face and you try something new. And, you know, that's been what the idea behind this was. Is like, Neil just took it to another level that we didn't expect. And here we are. There we go. I, I mean, uh, I, I kind of have a lot. I kind of have a lot to agree with that because, I mean, that's basically the whole reason I started this channel was to, you know, I mean, obviously I had no connections in the industry going back next month it'll be four years just like let me just start a wow. youtube channel see what happens and you know go from there and if i make mistakes like at least i'm making mistakes on my own behalf and like you know learning to figure out stuff each year and kind of reevaluating and reassessing like uh how things go each year as like a small business per se and I shout out to my mom. She came over yesterday because they were in town and we were talking. She was just like, it's so interesting how you like treat it like a business where you're like thinking about like what you're going to do next, what your next steps are, what your goals are like and trying to, you know, keep with how keep it like realistic in the sense of like doing stuff, but not too far out where you're just like, there's no way it's attainable. And even if it isn't, then at least you can fail and learn from those mistakes and hopefully, you know, do better the next time. Well, everything's attainable. It's just how sure. much are you willing to do it, you know? Like, you just always got to fall forward. That's what it is, you know? As a guy who fails at a lot of things, <laughs> you always fall forward, you know, you're in a good place. I really want to, like, I feel like I'm talking to my older brother right now because you look just like a younger <laughs> brother. Yeah, this is, it's like wild. I feel like my brother. Doesn't he look like Andrew? <laughs> he does. It's we'll have to get freaking a, me out. We'll get a side by side. Are you a quick? Yeah. Quick. Uh, yeah, we'll do a quick I, side by side. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Um, wild, wild, wild. Yeah. But the next thing, guys. I mean, so, I mean go ahead, Neil. I'm, I don't want to cut you off. Well, I was just gonna say, like, I totally agree with everything Paul said. I mean, one thing about the Great Heights Band, ever since we ever started, is we've always been like a DIY type of band where we mm -hmm. literally do everything ourselves from recording to video to making our own websites and like just like all the stuff we've done and we've sort of built that skill for a while. We like work with friends and people that we trust that um, can help us out with some stuff but like we haven't really relied on a, on a label in the traditional sense the way a lot of folks do if they're like mm -hmm. with a bigger label and we we're fortunate on the front end to work with a with an indie label called CI Records, who you know runs Launch and does a lot of cool stuff. But they're frankly limited in what they can do because sure. um, you know they're doing a bunch of different things. They're limited in budget. They're they're small indie, um, and I think that experience, though it gave us an opportunity to be on some big stages, probably sure. much quicker than most bands. It gave us um, sort of the the opportunity. To the eye is doing, quite frankly, and because we're not pulled in a million different directions, we could really fo hone in and focus on our craft more. And, you know, you've, you've said a couple of times that we focus on the business, and that's true, but I think the business has been secondary relative to the, the content and the, and the art, mm -hmm. and so, you know, we've always, no matter what we do, we always put our best foot forward, we always try to make the song as good as it can be. You know, I'm not the best singer or guitar player in the world. Paul's not the best drummer in the world. Eric's pretty damn good at production, but he's not the yeah. best producer in the world. <laughs> um, Owen's a good bass, not the best bassist, but we do our, our best for anything we're doing. Um, and I think that shows in everything we've released. And so. that's really what it comes down to when with Rad Pop, with Rad Pop Records, is we're really trying to instill that type of work ethic um, with our bands that we release, sure, yeah, um, and I think I think you see the results of that. So um, I totally agree with failure is good and all that, but you have to learn from it, and yeah. and a lot of times that means making sure you figure out what the recipe is and then follow that recipe and do the thing and then know that you're gonna have to tweak the recipe as things change. 
So that's all I wanted to add to that. Yeah, I wasn't saying as like an ancillary thing in terms of like your music because I think your music is great. I literally just got a new vinyl player and I played it today. I unironically to do the interview, but um, like. (laughs) <laughs> I, I was I, I was like again I went back and kind of like listened to it as like a refresher because obviously I'd listened to the new song as well but um for me it's like you know as as a business person small business owner like I see it as from the perspective of a business person I'm like yeah they're doing all these like really great things and just how they market themselves and how they kind of like arrange themselves online is really great but also just to add to that that they have the musical talent to back it up i think that's also just like you know two great things coming together as like one very cool thing and i just wanted to you know shout that out as something that i from like an outsider perspective enjoy but maybe people might not associate it as like you know if you're a fan of the band you just like them for their music and that might just be the end of the day, but like I think a lot of bands can take cues from what you do in terms of how you market it, how you put out stuff. I definitely feel like you're you're on the right track, at least in my opinion. So <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. But the next thing, guys, obviously the most recent thing is the new single. Uh, is it going to just be a single, and are you working on on a new record or EP or? I guess so you can tell the people what's what's going on uh, in the Great Heights band camp right now. Paul, can you take that? My uh, my dog keeps barking. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I knew it wasn't your phone ringing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know the the question is there. So earlier this year we uh, released, or I guess 2019, I should say, um, <laughs> released a, another single called "Lowly Little Help," um, mm-hmm. and. Then, you know, New Year's Day we release Clutter, and those are going to be a part of uh, an EP that we're in the process of finishing right now. Um, we uh, we got we have plans for 2020. Um, you know, last year we sat down together and we talked about what our goals were going to be for the band this year because um, you know it's always good to sit down and then try to have tangible things you're trying to reach, you know, um, yeah. and always be on the same page as to what you want out of what you're doing. And uh, I think we accomplished all those things, and this year, it's, you know, we want to get this, we want to get at least two records out this year. Tight. Um, and, you know, it wasn't necessarily strategic the way we were releasing it, but it's just that we wanted to get our music out there when we record it. Um you know, we're sort of living in this age where things die really fast. You know what I mean? Um, you gotta, you gotta keep putting things out, and it, it kind of sucks to say, but not too many people out there live for the album. You know what That's I mean? True. So, yeah, we wanted to be like, you know, with Rad Pop, we were so stoked on it because we we're like, man, this song's great. Man, this song's great. This song's great. But only like two really get to get the highlight on any album because you know whatever reasons, we were like, why don't we just, like, release it, you know, one by one and then put it out as a whole EP and then see how people like it, you know what I mean? Um, and, yeah, it's definitely going to go on that uh, record that we don't even know what the name of it is, but we're, we're planning it, or do we now? I don't know. Neil knows better than I do. I shouldn't have fielded this question at all, really. <laughs> is Neil present? Yes, oh, no. Neil, Neil is, I believe he uh, is present. <laughs> okay. I just saw him <laughs> airing. So I yeah, I mean, every, everything. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, like, I think he makes a super good point about um, people's attention these days is super short. Yeah. And you're competing with, like, um, like billions of literally billions of things at any given moment. Like, literally, we're having an interview right now, and I'm getting a phone call, and my dog is barking, and, like, I'm sure people are texting and, like, you know, I don't know what our president is doing, but there could be something he's doing that could be kind of crazy. Um, you know, there, there's I'm getting emails. So your attention is constantly being pulled in a million different directions. Oh, yeah. And an album is really for people that can sit down and listen to it, right? And Or if you're in a car and you're on a long enough drive where you can listen to it without wanting to hit, hit the skip button or get a phone call or whatever. And so... We said, why don't we try releasing singles and, like Paul said, have it add up to a record. 
Yeah. I think when we made Rat Pop, quite frankly, we, we got burnt out because we made that record over the course of a year. Um, did it all ourselves, but when I say all ourselves, it's like Eric had to be there basically 100% of the time. Yes. You know, there's some stuff I did, like without him, I would do some production at home or I would tweak stuff when he was like taking a break. But basically, he was there all the time. And that means there, he was there during times that literally the rest of us weren't there when he was mixing, editing, mastering, things like that. Whereas we're the assholes that can just like send him notes and say, "Hey, can you do it this way instead?" And, he, and he's like, hey, "I literally, I really don't, don't like what you did. Do it better." <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, the thing call uh, feedback is you can do better, <laughs> but, but you know, it so worked out. Hey, when I like, said that, what happened? It did work out. It didn't work out, um, <laughs> but I think he got tired, and I think sure. that we wanted to we wanted to get to a point where we can create something that wasn't as ambitious as a full length, but still gave us the same sort of uh, feeling that we completed something. So an EP makes sense, um, yeah. and and building out singles makes sense as far as like making sure people listen to it. Sure, I mean I feel like uh, I feel like a lot of people are taking cues from. I don't know if you saw the. I, it was an article, I don't know what uh, site it was on, but basically Bring Me the Horizon had done an interview where they were saying, like, we're done doing full-length records, we're going to do EPs, and we're just going to release songs when we feel like releasing them, and we're just not going to have a time frame where we're like, you know, we're going to release a record in, you know, January, you know, 20th, and that's it, and then you're going to have to wait, like, another two years until our next record's done or whatever and I totally agree with that too I feel like that's the trend of where things are going in the music industry you can even take like the rap and hip-hop scene for example a lot of their music is just singles or they have like maybe like a mixtape where they compile all those songs together but I they've always I feel like th that genre of music has always been ahead of the game in terms of like always having content out where people can check it out I mean yeah. you know I feel like that's the new the new wave, obviously. And also financially, man. Like if yeah. you look at hip hop artists, like they're doing they're living a lot better than we are. Sure. But yeah, but they're you know, they're always releasing the release when they want. Um, you know, if uh, anyone has ever been involved with a record label before, when you try to release a record, th there's like this weird pressure they put on you where they're like, Hey, we need this done, we need this master by this day, we need artwork by this day so that we can roll out because this is a spring album. If we don't release by this day, then we have to wait until like this day. And there's quarters to this, right? Like yeah, you have to yep. all, like in these time frames to hope that it hits at the right crowd at the right time. And like it's such an odd pressure to be like, hey, create something great. Just do it. Just create. Just finish your record and make it really good. You know, um, we're doing this on our own time, and it's really it's cool because even though oh, the songs are kind of being written one by one. Mm -hmm. When this EP comes out, you're going to see a common theme. Um, and it's going to be an, it's not going to be a compilation of five songs. It's going to be five songs that really make sense together. Um, and, you know, it's cool. It's, it's really fun to be doing this thing with my friends, like having fun, and then we're super proud of the art that we're making. Um, instead of having this odd pressure, like any time I've ever been on with a label, it's always this weird pressure. Like all of a sudden, it becomes this job that you have to yeah. show up for, and it's less about like, hey, like I started doing this because I just love making music with my friends, you know. And uh, it's uh, I don't know. I think it's really going to show on this next record, you know. No, or, I, you know, I, 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 record, record whatever. Well, I mean, I always get it wrong too, so I, I totally <laughs> get you, Paul. But I also feel like you know. It comes across in the music, and I've always felt that, like even with Rad Pop, even though you guys described it as being a hard time, I felt like the songs on it are still some of some of my favorites that I've listened to in a long time. Just because it's so, I feel like you guys have collectively done something different that other bands don't do. You know, I think the only band that I kind of attributed your music to kind of being similar to is like Motion City. And they went away, and then ironically enough, came back. So um, maybe they maybe they checked your record out and knew that they had to resurface again. Um, but I 
I feel like, you know, I, I definitely like where you guys are heading towards. And like I said, the singles have been really awesome. And I'm excited to check the EP out and, you know, see where your musical journeys go. But uh, the next question, guys, if you, there was an album that you wish that you wrote, what album would it be? Oh, God. That's tough. I only get one. Hmm. Uh, you can give me one and a runner-up. I feel like that would be... I, I don't want to pressure you guys. <laughs> one and a runner-up. Um, I think I would go with... Uh, I think I'd go with Rubber Soul. I mean, <laughs> one of the greatest albums I've ever made. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. The rubber Souls. Um, who are the Rubber Souls? Yeah, who? Are, yeah, who yeah, you know, who is that's that? not gonna happen. Who is that, Neil? <laughs> but he told me to pick an album. Who are the Rubber Souls? Yeah, who actually? Who are they? Yeah, or is it? Is that the album? <laughs> rubber Soul. Rubber Soul by the Beatles. Is the Beatles it by the Beatles? Oh God, we're Paul and I are gonna look like real dumb assholes on this. I, I really, I've been listening to the Beatles my whole you're, life. You're, you're, you've never heard of it. I think you're, you're full of shit, you know. <laughs> you're literally making this up because I've, I feel like that's not real. There's no way. <laughs> no one's ever heard of before. Like, oh yeah, just uh, you now, gotta, now, you gotta, now I gotta look it up. Music, yeah. I'm gonna look it up because I don't believe you. <laughs> Um, Pet Sounds, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. That's a, I would I would love to have made that album. Um, let's see. I thought I thought oh, Paul right. was going to say Pinkerton. He's right. No, it's he's. Yeah, I haven't he, heard anything yet. That he's right. No, that's it is it is a Beatles record, hundred percent. Yeah, I wish I wrote. <laughs> uh, that's wild. I wish I wrote uh, the Beatles' greatest hits record. Ooh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Beatles. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that one. That one. <laughs> no, I would say. <laughs> I would say never been more embarrassed. <laughs> I, I feel like I am. I'm definitely embarrassed for not knowing that. <laughs> Shit, that's so hard. I would. Pinkerton isn't even my favorite Weezer record. What is it? Blue. Green? Yeah, I'd say blue. That's like just because it like got me through a lot of things in my life. Um, yeah, I, I always have to say like I, it's it's gonna take me forever. I'm gonna I'll have an answer for you in a little bit. You're Don't gonna worry. ask a completely different question, and then I'm gonna know. Like, <laughs> Either that going. or how about, how about, Pose Brandon can help uh, you out with that. How about, uh, how about after one? Yeah. I would say no. I mean. I would say top, I, I gotta say like top two. It would probably be, or I'm gonna give you three. Okay, Blue three. Album by Weezer, um, The Stranger, Billy Joel, Ooh, okay. um, and probably Catalyst by Newfound Glory, honestly. Ooh, that's, that's a good yeah, list. That was like the one that was like, hey guys. I'm surprised you didn't, I'm surprised you didn't say, say what? I'm surprised you didn't say Dookie. Mm -hmm. There's a lot Dookie. of them, man. Like the problem is, there's so many albums that have shaped everything that I am from every genre of music that I can't really just pick one because, you know, there's so many things I'm just like, this is brilliant, and I wish that I had played on this or I had wrote this or whatever. You know what I mean? Or I feel like a channel, so it's, you know, I can't pinpoint one. Um, it's the Libra in me, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just because you're indecisive, Paul, and that's uh, that's the real answer. We, that's the no, real truth that we can bring out. Every <laughs> uh, well, that is a debate for another time, and I'm not a horoscope channel, so I can uh, not divulge answers on that. But I can ask you another question, which is uh, if you could compile a musical supergroup, who would be in your band? No. This I mean, can, I don't know. This I can't probably, include you uh, Eric or Tapp, not Paul Martinez, and Neil Carton. Yeah. Wow. Because we are a super group. I don't know if you mean. I didn't know. I didn't know. I really don't think I'd want to be playing with anybody else, honestly. It's, um, it doesn't matter how, like, well-renowned the musician is or how great they're at their instrument. Like, if you don't jive, 
Like, it just sucks. Like, playing music with people who you don't love sucks, and, like, I love my band. So I don't... I, my answer is literally the same as Neil's. Like, I have no desire to, like, change that. Because, like, yeah, would it be cool to play music with, like, Flea? You know what I mean? Would it be cool to play music with, I don't know, Adam Levine or some shit? You know what I mean? Like, like Rob Thomas? Would that not be awesome? But what what if I hate them? You know what I mean? What if they're <laughs> that'd be totally awesome. Totally, that would awesome. still be great. Music, music's gonna stop, you know. Like I don't think I can play any better music. I, I mean, I can see I can see you hating Adam Levine, but I don't see you hating Rob Thomas. Yeah, Rob Thomas seems like a wholesome guy. Yeah, I mean, it's just I I don't know. There, I literally, <laughs> if you want me to like actually pick outside this band, I would probably. <laughs> Say, I'm saying taking non-personal personalities into account, just like if from like a musical talent perspective, like who would you want to be yeah. in your band, basically? Neil, you want to go first? So like, so like honestly, man, like having done music for a long time, um, there's so many people that are famous that are really freaking talented, but there's so many people that no one's ever heard of that are also really freaking talented. So it's like... I don't really get phased by it so much anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I used to, many, many, many years ago, be like, holy shit, Travis Barker is the shit. And he is the shit. He deserves to be famous. He's really good at drums. But I know, like, probably 20 drummers that are amazing also that just no one's ever heard of. Like, earlier today, I went to this place. I Actually, my friend, our friend Kathy, she's in a band called Rose Riot. So I went to their music video shoot earlier today. Tight. And while they were, like, getting dressed and getting their makeup and all that stuff done... I walked down the street to this bar called the Admiral's Cup, and it's like like one o'clock in the afternoon, and and they're covering a cure, and I don't know who those dudes are, but they are fucking awesome. It was this a three piece band, and they were killing it, and I just like walk in, and I'm like, holy crap, I gotta just hang out and watch these guys play for like twenty minutes because this is really good at one o'clock Sunday afternoon, and I have no idea who they are. So, for me, that supergroup stuff doesn't, it's not, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree with Paul. Like, I'd rather, if I'm going to play in a band, I'm going to play with people that I like. Answer the question, Neil. You <laughs> wow, that was Adam real, you really Tom avoided Thomas. it. You yeah. talk around the question. Here, I'll, <laughs> all right, I, I'm going to go, uh, <laughs> Matt Freeman, bass player for Rancid, Operation Ooh. Ivy. Um, I'd say, uh, uh, Chris Connolly from Saves the Day. Oh, nice, yeah. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. And, oh, who else? I, I, see, the thing is, I actually wouldn't want to play in bands with people who are in, like, my most favorite bands. Oh, you know, and, uh, Noel Gallagher. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a cool band. Yeah. So you know, I prefer Liam Gallagher personally. So I don't know if this is gonna work anymore. <laughs> Neil, you don't get an opinion anymore. You didn't even answer the question. <laughs> that was that was probably one of the most <laughs> eloquent eva evasive moves. Have movement. you heard Liam Gallagher? What are you gonna say, Neil? Yeah, I have actually. Have you have you heard Liam Gallagher's new album? I no, know, it's yes. awesome. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> it's called Rubber Soul. <laughs> oh boy, I, I feel like we're yeah. not we're never gonna live this down, Paul. We are we're an infamy. <laughs> uh, but I that I'll have to give it to Neil. I'll have to give it to Neil. He was he was pretty aggressive on the evasive move, so I have to Props for 2020 already is I've already <laughs> had people evade my questions. So, Neil, you're number yeah. one. You're taking the throne. So if somebody wants to dismantle Neil, uh, feel free to come on and take him out. Uh, but I will get an answer no matter what. So you're going to give me an answer regardless. Uh, but the next thing, guys, I guess more currently, who have you been listening to? What's on your Spotify? What have you been jamming lately? Mm. 
What is? I'll just look at my Spotify right now. There you go. Record wise, I basically just listening. Listening to a lot of Frank Sinatra. Um, also, uh, on my record player right now, I've been listening to my friends' bands, so I have their records of so, like uh, my buddy's Tennis System out of LA. Um, they're awesome, like cool rock and roll, shoegazy, Nirvana ish, droney, fun, great music. Um, apparently, I've listened to a lot of Saves a Day, Newfound Glory, uh, Dangerous Summer, and Good Charlotte. Oh. And and this this and I like keep going back to it, but there's this girl named Lynx out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I think she lives in New York now, but she's like so dope, uh, and it's like really fun to blast that throughout my house. So uh, I don't know if you haven't heard her, like you gotta listen to her because I think that she's she's sick. Like I'm I'm kind of obsessed with her music. Neil, what do you got? <laughs> Well, I really think that I'm not impressed. So with I, I, anymore, so I don't listen to anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, exclusively, I exclusively listen to Rat Pop Records artists. Um, so one and life rub, to leave and rubber you soul, know, uh, Tales, uh, the, 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 the and and rubber soul by the Beatles. There's this there's this band actually there's this really cool band called the Stifle that's putting out a new record. Um, so I think through like their demos and stuff that's on on Spotify. Um, it's a really aggressive punk rock album. Um, but beyond that, like um, our friends X Nations just put out a new song um, on New Year's Day, uh, same day as Clutter. Um, there's an artist that's from Timonium, I want to say, like north of Baltimore, uh, named Janelle De La Rosa. That's really cool. She's like a uh, pop artist, but just like really cool. She produces all her own stuff. Type. Um, just looking through. Oh, there's a band called D from DC called Origami Angel. Yep, that's really really good. <laughs> uh, they're like punk rock band, but like like highly technical. Um, so that's sweet. Uh, and just kind of like whatever, man. Pretty much every day I'm listening to different stuff. So, um, my wife got me into Casey Musgraves. <laughs> they're really, dude, really, really good music. Uh, yeah. Awesome, guys. And then the last thing. What'd you say? Most, I said the last thing, the most important thing, guys. Tell them about your band, your label, all of that stuff, and uh, what's coming up in the next couple months. So, um, The Great Heights Band is putting out uh, a new EP. Um, hopefully, in the spring, we have a couple more songs that we need to record. Um, but we have two more songs that are already done, so we have basically four in the hopper. We want to put out like a five or six on EP. Um, so hopefully we put out another single in early because I think we lucked out and Clutter's doing really, really well. Um, we're really grateful to Spotify um, for placing it on the new uh, Punk Tracks playlist, and that's gotten a lot of um, new attention to our band that we haven't had before, so that's really cool. Um, and then... Beyond that, uh, Rad Pop Records is putting out a new Origami Army song on January 15th. Um, that's like my, my side hustle thing that I do. Um, and then we'll be putting out, I can't say yet who it's going to be, but we'll be putting out something new in February. And then, of course, there'll be a new stuff. I know One Life to Lead is working on some new stuff, and we have some other artists that we're, we're trying to bring into the fold. Um, I know that Eric is working on a record with uh, his other band uh, called The Old Line. Um, they're getting together uh, in the middle of the month to, to kind of and so hopefully we'll be putting that out through Rad Pop uh, if we can make things work. Uh, that would be a dream. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. There's always stuff happening, man. Oh, oh, I know. You don't have to tell me. I'm always doing something. But you should go check out Great Heights bands as well as Rad Pop Records. Links will be in the description where you can find out about their band, music, and uh, how you can get in contact with Rad Pop if you feel so inclined to. And uh, if you enjoyed this interview, share it, like it, subscribe, comment, uh, rubber soul in the comments if you watch the whole thing so uh, I can be completely demoralized when I see it later on. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys for, for coming on again and chatting and, you know, it's always good to catch up with bands that I like that I've had on before. 
So thanks, guys. Are we going to see our launch this year? Huh? Are we going to see our launch this year? Uh, yes, you should see me at launch this year. So if this this video is now on the internet, so uh, if I'm not going, make sure to just barrage me with terrible messages. No, please don't. But if you do, <laughs> I understand. But go check them out. Uh, links in the description. Thanks. To we'll, we'll have to do a follow up at lunch, man. We will do. We will do a follow up for sure. All right, guys. We'll do a follow up interview about our thoughts on Rubber Soul. <laughs> It will just be uh, it will just be you and me, Paul. That will be it. Neil will be behind, <laughs> yeah, like, will be behind the camera giving us pointers. Uh, great. <laughs> I didn't listen to it. Did you? You, guys, you know what you guys can do? You guys can put on the record and you can have a you can have a fireside chat. You can we'll like do, put, we'll like, do nice, it live. Nice, we'll do you know, we'll do it live. I have, a, I have a record player yeah. now. I'll just ask my parents for it. I'm sure they got it. I don't know. It'll Whatever. Be great. Anyway, guys, <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Later, guys. See ya. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button, it really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media, that's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us guys talk to you later deuces